Afternoon, everybody. Okay, so my name is Nick Begnall. I run what we call the Data Science Service at uh, UBS. Um, it is a self-service data preparation and machine learning uh, service platform that we provide uh, for the entire the entire organisation. So. Uh, just to start off, a little bit of background on myself. So I've been at UBS for 18 years. Um, effectively, that kind of breaks down to about uh, three different phases of my, my career there. So I, I started off in uh, infrastructure, uh, IT management infrastructure within the investment bank. Um, uh, the middle phase was uh, moving into kind of the business management of, of that uh, and also group technology in general, uh, facing off to the um, investment bank. And then finally, that kind of led into using some of the data that was in, available to me in that role and then moving you know, more into a data analytics role, uh, not first of all for the investment bank, but then across the whole group as we were able to leverage some of the uh, the, the, the tools available uh, in this space. So that was about five years ago that I started moving into data analytics and then we were able to basically pick up um, that and create a service around it uh, for the entire group. So I'll, um, and I'll explain how we then, we've done that. Uh, just a, before I do, a little bit on uh, UBS itself. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of UBS, but um, uh, for those of you that haven't, UBS is a... Swiss bank, it's the largest Swiss bank. Uh, we have a global reach. We have about uh, six, 65,000 employees plus another 30 odd thousand uh, outsource or contractors uh, in about 58 countries. Uh, annual revenues of uh, around the region of uh, $30 billion. Um, uh, and the costs of about $25 billion. So it's, it's a significant. Uh, financial organization, um, and we've had a, in my 18 years, we've had quite a history uh, and gone through various different phases of, you know, the recession and uh, changes in the culture, um, particularly around how we deal with data, what we do with data, and how we, um, how we manage that. So, as a, as a company, what are, what are we trying to achieve around data? Um, uh, our CEO did call us a data-driven organization, but I, I think what we're trying to achieve here is, a, uh, is an enablement of uh, our data to provide, a, uh, provide the people with the ability to make the right decisions, uh, you know, statistically backing up those decisions with, you know, facts, data, right? So we take the data, um, we apply the knowledge that we have around, obviously, the, the industry, uh, the various different components that we have within the organization, um, and action on the back of that. So that's, the, you know, that's fundamentally what we're trying to achieve. That's the ethos of my team and what, we're, what we, you know, want, we want the organization to be doing generally across the whole, whole bank. So... So how do, how do we do that? So we, what, we, what we've noticed is that there are various different roles that play out in data analytics, in, in data science, okay? And it's, uh, so there's, the, you know, one of the, the crucial roles is that the guys that produce the, the models and the algorithms that we, we, we run our data through. And these are the, the, the data scientists, okay? Now, uh, we're a large organization, and there's, but there's no way we could employ enough data scientists to go around for the amount of data that we have. Um, you know, we, they're quite expensive resources, um, and getting them to do all of the other stuff that is required uh, to, to prep and manage that data is, 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 is kind of inefficient. So we have other roles that fit into, that, into this kind of Venn diagram. So we have a, a data an analyst or sometimes called a data engineer. So their main primarily role is around, you know, you know, munging the data into a usable state, bringing it from different sources together so that it can then be applied through those models. Um, we, we see it time and time again that the data scientists, if they're spending all their time doing that, then they're, you know, they're, they spend up to 80% of the time doing data preparation. Um, so, uh, you know, they've got, you know, higher educational degrees, PhDs, and therefore we don't want to be wasting, you know, that knowledge, that skill set on what is 
fairly low-level data preparation. We've got, we've got lots of data analysts, and we, we've got lots in our offshore locations as well, which are relatively cheap. Um, but also important is the business knowledge. You need to have that SME. That knowledge around what the data is actually telling you is vitally important. So you've got to bring all three of those things together to give you your, you know, your sort of perfect setup in terms of doing data science. However, they don't exist in one person. It's a unicorn. So we, this is why we've got, got to try and collaborate between these different roles and bring them together. So if you're using um, coding language, R, Python, to do that, it's really difficult to bring all of those different roles together. Um, maybe the, you know, the two on the, on the right-hand side are, can, you know, can understand each other, but the, the, the business manager, the business analyst isn't going to understand that. So you know, how, how do you bring all that together? So really, that's where my team comes in, my data science service. So we provide that platform, we provide that environment um, for them to come together and collaborate um, in, a, in an efficient way. And what that really drives out the back of that is because you've got business analysts and data analysts also doing and using the machine models uh, that have been created by your data scientists, they then become citizen data scientists. I know it's a Gartner term that some people don't like, but it effectively upskills your general population. So how, how do you then build on those? How do you create those citizen data scientists within your organization? Um, so you take your employee, um, so we've, we've taken thousands of employees within UBS and, and, and we've given them the tools to be able to do that data preparation, do that uh, machine learning, um, and these are the suite of tools within my services, um, although we do have uh, other tools within the analytics stack as well. Um, and then we provide them with support and training and an, uh, a safe environment for them to work in, uh, preferably without applying uh, a lot of additional workload on them, and I'll get to, get to that in a, in a minute. And that's what creates your citizen data scientist. Um, so fundamentally, that's, there's, there's a process and a formula to doing this. You don't, can't just throw the tools at people and employees and expect them to be able to just pick them up and run. So as I mentioned, they're not just the only kind of platform-wide service within the organization. UBS made a conscious decision that analytics would be driven, certainly the capabilities would be driven out of group technology. So I sit in group technology, actually within the infrastructure organization. Um, and as part of my wider department, we provide um, a whole stack of analytics capabilities. So, you know, I'll just quickly you know, run through them. Business, business intelligence one is Agile BI, we call it. It's just a, a data visualization uh, based, based around Tableau. Um, we also have that middle layer there, which is a data transformation, data governance, data management, data quality uh, layer. That's mostly built out of Informatica at UBS, but you know, uh, our other tools are available. Um, and then uh, the bottom layer there is our, is our, is our kind of storage layer, our um, uh, big data clusters and our data warehousing layer. So we provide that whole top to bottom stack uh, available to uh, the group, anybody within the organization, so that they can then you know, basically build their whole analytics stack in one place and have it, have it centrally managed. We have the economies of scale in there, and then they don't have to worry so much about some of the managing of those technologies. So there are certain things that we have to do to be able to provide this environment, this ecosystem that our day analysts can work in um, so they're not uh, having to worry about man managing that infrastructure or that application. So obviously, the fun, you know, one of the first thing is managing the infrastructure that it sits on. So um, you know, data queue sits on uh, on servers that has to be provisioned, managed uh, from an engineering perspective. So you know, my team provides that that capability. Disaster recovery. So disaster recovery is massively important in a in a, a you know financial organization. You know, you, we have you know outages in data centers, and and you need to be able to shift, you know, the the, the processing that's happening, the, the the workflows or the the machine machine learning models from one place to another. 
uh, from one data center to another. It's, you know, it's not quite seamless, but it's, it's pretty quick. And so that's one thing that we're, trying, we, we're putting in place so that, they, that it's a seamless position. Um, uh, integration with company systems. So we are a highly regulated bank. Uh, access to data is uh, on a need-to-know basis. We have authorization systems of firewalls internally between, particularly within our Swiss domain and the rest of the world, um, which means that we cannot have data leakage going between two or people seeing the data that they shouldn't be seeing. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite important. Um, and also, you know, it, integration with monitoring tools uh, such as our, you know, audit tools and, our, and Splunk, which is what we use for monitoring of the, the application and the, and the servers, underlying servers. Uh, obviously, operational stability. So, uh, managing. So, we've got all these different teams from all across the different banks. So, we need to be able to bring them together on the same platform and have set, set up different projects for them to work in, admin those, administrate those users as they come in um, and, and leave as well, because there's a lever process as well for for these projects. So, it's important to have, uh, you know, a, a controlled framework around. Uh, how you manage the, the, the setup of, of your environment. Uh, so in terms of uh, the kind of product management, obviously we, we can't, DataEQ probably release on a, on a quarterly basis, for example, a lot of these software vendors do. So what we do is we, we couldn't keep up with that. We're a large organization. Our, our packaging teams actually are not able to keep up with that kind of high turnover. So we aim for every six months so that we're on as close as possible to the latest version. Um, we're on 5.1.1 of DataEQ, for example, so we're, we're actually on the latest version at the moment. Um, so we, we work through as quickly as we can to get that out, but we, you know, doing it every quarter would be, would be too much. Uh, we also have different environment levels. So we now we have a, a, a base, what we call an engineering uh, environment, but then we also have a, a UAT um, and a pre-prod in Switzerland and a production and a disaster recovery environment. So there's multiple environments going on um, that we, we manage and provide so that we can uh, do proper SDLC, uh, software development lifecycle, around how we promote the, the, the application into production. Um, not really to be confused with any... Um, uh, SDLC or ADLC, analytics development lifecycle, that our, our user community might be doing themselves. That's all production as far as we're concerned, and we provide different environments for them to be able to do that in, in our production instance. Incident management. So at UBS, we use ServiceNow, but there are other incident tool management out there. So I think the, the, the key here is that we need to be able to distinguish with what is a known incident or an existing incident versus an, uh, a new incident versus what we can deal with ourselves, what, what we need to escalate up to uh, either the vendor or to our you know, OS support teams. Um, so it's, it's filtering and being able to triage those incidents is, is, is really important. Um, standards and, and policy adherence. So, I mean, you've heard a lot about banks and the, you know, the, the regulators, uh, regulations that are put on us. Um, we have a huge number of different policies that we have to follow. Um, it's actually um, mind-numbing how much paperwork you have to go through if you work in a bank. Um, but fundamentally, we try and take as much of that onto you know, the platform and, and have that managed so that our users, our data scientists, our data analysts are not having to, to do that themselves. There's some examples where they have to because they own the data, um, but you know, the, as much as possible we try and take that on. Managing the vendor. So uh, it doesn't sound like it's a lot of effort, but when, when you have as many users as, as we do, uh, the interactions we have with the vendor are quite often, as we, we onboard more and more users and that interact backwards and forwards, we have you know, uh, monthly calls and quarterly meetings with, our, uh, uh, with, uh, with the vendor, both the, the customer success manager and the, the account manager, as well as various other uh, parts of there, including things like doing talks like this. So you know, it's, it's important to keep that relationship alive. We, we see it as a partnership. Um, we're not necessarily just a customer 
uh, vendor relationship. You know, so we 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 want to help. You know, companies like DataRQ to become better because if they're better, then we're better, and if they succeed, we succeed. So um, you know, that it's, it is a partnership. So it's important that we we work closely together. Um, but we don't just deal with the vendor. We also uh, engage with uh, consultancies and partners, partners of the vendor. So really fundamentally, uh, when you're talking about training up as many people as we have in our organization, you know, taking advantage of those partners that are out there to be able to provide that training, um, provide the help to the project teams when they need it, if they need a resource for a few weeks, a few months, to be able to kickstart a project, get it going. You know, often they will not know who to contact, but we've got that kind of central contact. We know the, the, the partners that are available um, with the skill sets that they have. So depending on the, you know, the requirements of the particular project, then we can help advise and get, those, get that in. So it's, it's quite an important um, part of the role, this. Um, we also have to look at you know, what's going on in the industry, what's going on in terms of uh, best practices. You know, uh, we need to advise our users and our project teams on, you know, how, you know, maybe where they're going wrong, what could, in terms of their performance or the setup of their uh, algorithms. We also need to look at what the emerging technologies are in this industry. It is changing rapidly. Uh, if you, if you, you know, if you'd come, well, this, this conference didn't exist three years ago, for example, um, and uh, in London, and we basically are looking at what, you know, what the, the landscape and how it's changing. I think that, you know, there's going to be a big move with the, you know, the big players, the, uh, you know, Microsofts and the uh, Amazons and the Googles in terms of machines, particularly in terms of machine learning. I think uh, in analytics as a general, um, you know, companies like Data data are in a really good position to provide that niche and, um, and work with them, but there is that always present big player, you know, my management saying, well, we pay a fortune to Microsoft, why can't we just use their stack, right? And, you know, so, you know, the, the in innovation and the, the better product that we get out of the, the, uh, the, the software providers like a data EQ is what's going to help us, you know, kind of do be better, beat our comp competitors, um, so we want to make sure that, that that goes through. So we keep a very close eye on how that works and, 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 and use that partnership we have the vendor to make sure that we get the best results. We also believe very strongly, this is probably one of the key things in the social, social network or community within the organization. So we have a, you know, an internal uh, social media website. We also have a... Um, uh, chat group chat channel um, and various you know groups and forums that we have to bring the community internally together um, so you know th this is a uh, this is how people learn and, and what we find with data analytics is they you know feeding off each other bouncing ideas off each other is how it really evolves and how it moves forward forward but we also um, have to manage the licenses. Um, you know, we've got we've got numerous licenses with lots of people coming and going. So managing that licensing uh, uh, is important. So it's another facet that we that we uh, manage and making sure that the users are using the right language, license in the right place. And finally, kind of training and syllabus and doctor sessions. So this is you know organizing internal training as we've got a lot of onboarding of, of, of you know, uh, people into the organization, onto these tools. Um, so making sure that we, we facilitate that training. We've got a couple of training sessions going on today, for example, um, to, to help build that up. And then those one-to-one -one sessions, uh, either with my team or with the, uh, the vendor or partners to, to enhance and, and um, really allow people to guide through their workflows, understand their models a bit better, and are they applying the right kind of uh, rules to the, the, the requirements that they, they've got. So just to, just to summarize, um, these, these are the, basically the summarizations of all the slides you've just seen before. Um, and they, you know, they go from basically uh, user engagement, engi engineering, um, 
vendor management and product management. So those are kind of the four areas that we look at and how we manage the, the, the service as a whole. And ultimately, it just makes passionate people within the organization really passionate about using data, enabling data to make the right decisions for the organization. Thank you.